This is where the big boys play, huh? We ain't here to play. At the total component, wait. and gentlemen at well over 500 pounds this is for the big boys play all right welcome to the show everybody this is hot tags presented by at a combined weight i'm your host charlie dudley joined as always by robert mcelroy today we're going to talk about raw smackdown and just overall news in the wrestling world got a little a day late here we're going to try not to be a dollar short rob how you doing I'm doing well, Charles. Thank you, as always. I uh looking forward to getting into what's happening in the world of wrestling this week. It, I think uh, we're all disappointed for a second week in a row. It did. It was kind of a letdown, and it. I hope that it doesn't become a trend. And, you know, this week's Raw dipped under 3 million people for the first time in a long time. Uh, but you can kind of... If you're WWE, you maybe be able to explain that away with the Olympics. You know, it only happens every four years. Um, the swimming and diving and gymnastics has been pretty good TV for a lot of people. So maybe that cut into their rating a little bit. You got to hope anyway. But, yeah, there's very various sporting events tend to throw a monkey wrench into Raw's ratings every once in a while. Like I know uh, we've discussed in the past, uh, I want to say around, I don't know if it's like NFL playoff time. Well, Monday Night Football a dip. is a good game. That, Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football will, will cut into their their rating for sure if it's a good game. If it's a shit game, then it doesn't really cut into their rating. And I'm so thankful that they've gone the way of moving tennis and the dog show to other shows. I remember when I was a kid, I used to get so pissed when you turn on and it was the dog show or the U.S. Open because USA would carry it and you wouldn't get to watch wrestling. And, I mean, a lot of times as a kid, that's like one of your main things to look forward to. And sometimes uh, as an adult, yeah. rather than, you know, if they keep, if they don't give us shows like they did this week. Yeah, I remember you and I have an entire show devoted to Money Nitro, but I thought watching Thunder in Paradise was the perfect segue into going oh, yeah. to, into Money Nitro. In fact, like my little brother, his, his best memories of watching wrestling with me is when we got to watch Thunder in Paradise. He's as much of a mark for that show as anybody I ever was friends with back I then. I thought it was – we'll talk a little bit more about the Thunder in Paradise when we get to, to WCW, our, uh, our Nitro retrospective. Uh, getting back to Raw, as you said, a really, really weak episode. A lot of talking, very, very little good wrestling. A lot of short matches and a shit ton of video packages. I just didn't think that they gave us their best effort this week. The They opened the show with your typical promo segment. Now, I didn't absolutely hate this segment. Enzo and Cass, Jericho and Owens. Best segment on the early part of the show. This is a great example of when you're... When your promoters or guys that cover wrestling, they talk about guys talking you into the building, you know, talking you into the pay-per-view. This is what they what they're talking about. You've got three of the four guys in the ring are great talkers. Enzo, of course, with his shtick, and then you've got Jericho and Owens, who are fantastic. But I'm, I, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of over. Matt, I'm kind of over the, the program starting with a promo segment which leads to a match right now or a match later in the show. What, what, do you, what about you? 
Uh, I agree 100%. I have talked before about how I don't like lazy booking, and this is a, an aspect of that. Um, you're the number one wrestling company in the world. You really don't have a lot of competition. Get your shit together and write me a good show, please. Write us a great show. You could do something else to start the show. And, and like, I'm with you in that I, I was not totally anti this segment. I thought there were aspects of it that were good. But if we're going to have some heat going forward, at times I thought it was too comedic. I need more hatred. I need more of a build. Give me more heat instead of, you know, the comedy club stardom in Birmingham. Well, it's tough for them to give you heat when they're just kind of – this feud right here screams of a production meeting running down the card for SummerSlam and looking at the who's not on the card that needs to be list over there and saying, oh, shit, we need somebody for Enzo and Kaz to face, and Jericho's not on the card, and neither is Kevin Owens. What do we do with them? Oh, hey, let's throw them in a tag match. So that's essentially what happened. And I, I'm okay with Jericho and Owens being together just because the fact that I love them and I really enjoy Enzo and Kaz as well. So the mic work is going to be great, and the, the, the match will be fine. But you're not going to get a lot of heat when you just kind of throw guys into matches together. There's no, like, rhyme or reason. It might as well be... Uh, an episode of All American Wrestling on S Sunday morning, or uh, WWF Superstars back in the day. Just like these guys are wrestling for no fucking reason. Here it is. There's no heat. Nobody stole anybody's girlfriend, or beat them up, or took a shit in their bag, or stole their lunch, or looked at them ugly, or pushed them down, or <clears throat> whatever reason, you know. Yeah, the good part of this from a booking standpoint is that you do have a bunch of really good mic workers. Right. If you're going to have them do opening segments where they're talking, we're at least going to be treated to some entertaining stuff there. Uh, another good aspect of this from a booking standpoint is that you have Enzo and Kaz. Kaz is the, is the big man, the thunder to Enzo's lightning. Jericho needs that too. I think who better to pair him with than Kevin Owens? Do you think they... Wrestle together for a while as a team, the I way Jericho's not. done before? I hope not. I I, I hope that I, – because I don't think it does anything for Kevin Owens. I think he needs to be a singles guy. I think he needs to get into that U.S. title picture if it was better or position himself to challenge Rollins or uh, Finn Balor whoever wins, you know, position himself in that upper, upper mid card or main event level. That's where he should be. He shouldn't be in a fucking tag team for a, long, for a long period of time. I, I know they don't have a, they don't have a match to have him in at SummerSlam until now, but you've got to have a, a long-term plan for him going forward and you got to think that you're not going to put reigns in that position and if you put the belt on finn balor they already have history from nxt so there you go uh another thing i want to talk about with raw <clears throat> is the the club and their doctor segment talking about how they um kind of put Big E on the shelf Last week, I think they're trying a little too hard to get them over as cool heels. Both of these guys can talk pretty well, and they both have that style in the ring as kind of an ass kicker type guy. I, I, I'm just not a big fan of them trying to be the love child of the Outsiders and DX. I, mean, I understand that that's what they're trying to do, I guess, maybe. But just let them come in there and just be ass kickers and be legitimate guys, very similar to like the way they portray Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is not coming in there and talking about how he punched some guy in the dick or slammed his dick into a ring post and uh, ring postitis or whatever, and it's like a running joke and making a bunch of dick jokes. He's talking about how he fucking kills people and smashes them and suplexes the shit out of them. 
that's the way you build a ass kicker heel. And they can I agree be 100%. cool, but I don't need a whole segment of dick jokes. I mean, yeah, it was amusing, but it's very sophomoric and it wasn't needed. I don't think it adds anything to their character. I don't think they've been established enough as a, as a certain type of character in the WWE realm of television to where they can make dick jokes and not be, Oh, the guys that make dick jokes rather than, these guys are cool as shit. They're hilarious. L- listen to them making dick jokes. You know? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't mind some comedic fodder, some camp, as long as it works, as long as it gets over. DX did that very well, and this these guys don't have to be to be DX to be great. Uh, I think the WWE is too quick to resort to having not only their heels but their baby faces do shit like this, and it's yeah. just not. It's just not necessary. Why do we always? Yes, you're entertainment medium, but uh, entertainment entertain us in the way Lesnar does. If, if you're, if, I mean, I've stood next to Luke Gallows before. He's fucking enormous. Yeah, he's huge, you could, dude. You could I remember he was at the Pelham Civic Center. Yeah, uh, he, you could easily book him to be this monster heel, this absolute evil, evil piece of shit. It'd be great. Which, and I think honestly, you could. If they want to turn these guys into the second coming of Hall and Nash, you could do that. But Hall and Nash weren't making dick jokes in June and July of 96. No. You know, they didn't become like the dick joke, funny, cool heels until later in their NWO run when – they had already established themselves as what you like to call as the problem children, guys that come in and just fuck shit up, and they're, they'll they kick the shit out of you rather than just look at you and talk to you. Establish them as somebody to be feared and as, like, <clears throat> like cool guys. Yeah. Cool heels, and then bring the dick jokes in if you want to. Don't don't lead with the dick jokes. They haven't been in the company that long, and essentially you're just saying like, well, okay, these guys are really mean and they make dick jokes. So are we supposed to fear them? Are we supposed to laugh at them, or what? At this point, you don't know. I mean, if you watch yourself in New Japan, you know, but it's it's insipid booking on the part of WWE. Well, they could they could quickly go away from it. I mean, next week, hopefully. Oh yeah, we hopefully see. they do. But I don't think they yeah. will because they're in with the new day. Oh hell's bells! So then we're gonna be seeing more goofy shit like this. Probably so. Uh, speaking of goofy shit, the Rusev Roman Reigns wedding segment. You knew as a wrestling as a long time wrestling fan. Anytime you see a cake anywhere around the ring or anywhere around wrestlers. Someone's going into the cake. And any time there's a wedding, there's, there's an angle coming. Well, any time it's a scenario in the ring where they have a lot of different props. Oh, some, some shit's going down. They're going to go through those props like shit through a goose. I mean, the it's, first wedding that I can remember that, that went off without a hitch didn't end up going off without a hitch. Because it was... The Macho Man Liz wedding at SummerSlam, and it was all fun and games and whatever until you watched WWF TV the next time and saw post-pay-per-view at the reception that Undertaker and Jake the Snake showed up with a damn Cobra, and they were fucking shit up. Okay? I mean, so in wrestling, if there's a wedding, there's an angle coming. I thought it was very telegraphed. In that way, um, <laughs> last week we talked about how, you know, Reigns is going up against Rusev, and this segment was terrible, and it got a little better when Reigns came out, but they booed the shit out of him. If okay. you can't get over as an American going against an anti-American gimmick, you're DOA, man. It's true. It's funny how uh, I spoke of how he needed a new look about him. And now there's like not, now there's like red outlines in his shit. Yeah, but like that's that's not enough of a change. Like no, I was talking uh-uh. to you, called it a new coat of paint. 
Uh, and that, that, that was exactly what it is, is a new coat of paint. You want it just touching up though. You're (laughs) cutting in, like, you're just kind of like, you know, painting the damn trim work uh, around the base, the the baseboards and the crown molding. That's about it. (laughs) That's all you're doing. That's, I, I was talking about a much bigger transformation than that. Yeah. But, uh, you're right. If he can't, if he can't get over as the, uh, American up against the anti American. I tell you, they need to do what I've what I've proposed. Which, if they always did what I proposed, I, I, then it would come awfully uh awfully predictable, I guess. But no, it, I guess the uh, most memorable wedding segment I ever saw was Harlem Heat with Sensational Sherry, and they were in Las. I don't remember that. Dude, they were in Las Vegas, and they had this like reception that was outside of the little drive-through in which they got married at. I just remember as a kid feeling really sorry for them that they had a really shitty wedding reception i was, was like her and colonel rob parker they got married it you know i think it might have been i think it might have been hey well and it, bring you could bring that back up on the night show <laughs> as, uh, that 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 relationship is blossoming in that uh in that episode of nitro i say good for them i think they're perfect for each other roman reigns to me he needs to decide if he's going to like, he's trying to also be kind of that cool edgy character. And he makes little comments, but they don't really get over. And he's like, well, I came out here cause I, I thought you needed a best man. And then they fight and it was okay. Once he came out the whole wedding segment of, of them showing pictures and shit was terrible. It was terrible. Um, a little let's try, I'll try to be positive here since this <laughs> has been a little more negatively tinged, I guess. The main event, I didn't hate it. The fact that I was ready to hate it. If I was up on my soapbox getting ready to, to bury this segment about how I hated the fact that uh, Mick Foley and Daniel Bryan were out there just talking during the main event segment and just kind of going back and forth, and they didn't push any of the main event segment. But then they did a match between Rusev and Cesaro, and I wasn't expecting that. And the good thing about wrestling is when you don't expect things. When you're pleasantly surprised, you're ready to hate it, and you're like, man, this is going to be garbage. I hate this guy, and then he surprises you and has a good match, or I really don't really care about this feud, or I'm not really looking forward to this show. In this segment, I was ready to hate the fact that it was about, uh, you know, 9.55 around there, central time. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, shit. Were they just going to talk during the overrun? I was like, there's going to be an angle or something. And then they make the match, and that match was pretty good. I didn't like that they didn't have Cesaro go over and do the title change and just have Rusev and Reigns fight uh, at the pay-per-view for, for nothing. But now my question is, which we can get back to a little bit more on SmackDown, but you've got some guys not on this card yet for SummerSlam. You've got some good some good guys that aren't on the card. You've got to think you've got Sheamus and Cesaro are going to wrestle again because of the angle at the end of, of Raw with Sheamus interfering. Enzo and Kaz against Jericho and Owens. New Day in the club. Roman Reigns and Rusev. Charlotte and Sasha. And Rollins and Balor. That's your Raw portion of, of SummerSlam. My question is, where's Sami Zayn? Where's Bray Wyatt? Mm. Where's Alberto Del Rio? Where's Becky Lynch? You got nothing. I mean, maybe Becky Lynch uh, gets on the card somehow, but, I mean, where are these people going to be? That's a good question, and everybody you've named me are people I like. Yeah. Damn it. Like, and put Jane, somewhere. He hasn't been on TV the last couple of weeks. What the fuck? Where is he? Is he taking a vacation or what? Put him in a know, yeah, Have him but, squash somebody, something. Shit. 
I think, I mean, do you just, when you have leftovers like this. They're just going to throw them in a match, and they're going to be on the pre-show, and it's going to suck. Oh, God. That's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a multi-man match. You've got some feuds that you've got. We'll talk about some other feuds on, on SmackDown, but. Uh, put Sami Zayn against somebody. Somebody. Don't put him in a multi-man. Well, we're going to have a battle roll for the slap dick Sammy uh, trophy of the year. Oh, God. That's no, I'm tired. Do, man. It is. I, I'm tired of just tits on a boar hog battle royals. Right. That uh, it, it seems like they're always, but they w- battle royals would be viewed by me as a positive thing if they would put guys in them who had something greater to achieve than, like you said, the slap dick battle royal trophy of the year. Yeah, I mean, kind of thing. Got, if it's like the Rumble, I, I love the Rumble. There like, you I, go. I don't mind the Andre the Giant battle royal at, at WrestleMania, but I don't think that they've done anything with – it doesn't propel you to do anything. You don't win – it's like they, how they've killed the king of the ring. Right. If you win it, you get to hold this giant trophy, but you don't do shit. You get pushed down the card, and you're feuding with Kalisto. Yeah, I feel like the Andre the Giant Battle Royal Trophy could be something cool yeah, if they could. had it. It really, really could be. And I remember when it first it debuted WrestleMania 30, you and I were watching it together. Cesaro won it, and I remember asking you, I was like, man, I wonder if they're going to have him – Owen Hart, this thing, the way they did with the Slammy Awards, was not a part of his character. Hell, the following week on WWE TV, you forgot he won the thing. Hell yeah. That's how, I mean, it's pretty much what happened with Baron Corbin, too. He come, It was at ringside with him that first week, and then he ends up wrestling Dolph Ziggler for a month of Sundays and ends up on the pre-show several times against him. And then you forget or get, you forget to give a shit that he won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Dude, you could. Th- there's so many simple things you could do with that that would, especially for heels, you could have them come out with the trophy, bragging about how they're now the next Andre the Giant, and aren't I awesome because I did this? Very, like I said, very Owen Hart with the Slammies, but they don't do that. No, ever. No, not at all. Uh, SmackDown started the exact same way Raw did. Promo segment. Promo segment. That formulaic start, it, it, you know, when we were in radio, we had to take breaks at the 15, the 30, and the 45 of the hour, and then the top of the hour, okay? And it's relatively around the same time that they take commercial breaks. So that first segment, that first 15-minute segment is filled with talking. So this week we get um, your typical insert Insert pay-per-view opponent, you know, you are a pay-per-view opponent, but you're going to be on a tag team. Let's see if you can coexist. That's the same insipid bullshit that we've seen for a decade. Now, how many times did we see John Cena and Randy Orton team? A lot. It's been done to death. Yeah, and also another theme over the course of both, well, mainly with Raw, but <sighs> too many video packages of people we needed to see wrestle, too many video packages of people that people in Anaheim, California paid good money to see. Yeah, It would have been good to have gotten a Nia Jax match instead of seeing her in videos. It would have been nice to have gotten Finn Balor doing something else other than just seeing him in a video package. I, I can't recall how much they did this with SmackDown, but... <sighs> I, I just I, the the promo segment with, with Rollins was okay on on Raw, but SmackDown opens and Wyatt cuts a great promo. Don't get me wrong, as he always does, great promo. But he's been booked awful. Okay, doesn't have a match at SummerSlam. the The segment leads to a stupid fucking tag match where a guy that I'm supposed to be feuding with. Is my tag team partner if I'm Ziggler or Ambrose? Okay, it's been done to death. It was cool back in the 80s when uh, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man teamed together and then they broke apart and the mega powers exploded 
and it was okay. But now it's been done to death. It's like, oh, well, I know that y'all hate each other, but tonight we're going to put you on the same side and see if you can coexist. And then they run some angle at the end where they can't coexist after they already won. Yipty, yipty do. It doesn't make any sense. It is, it is really dumb. I don't understand the point of it all. And to talk Why about, <sighs> yeah, go ahead. No, I was, I was going to say, like, I'm trying to think of a way to make that better. Hell, put them on opposite teams. They're going to be facing off against each other anyway. Don't I see if you're if you are facing off for the title, okay? And I'm it's a very very old school mentality for me. If I am facing you for the title at SummerSlam, we should not touch until then. Okay, if you want to have some back and forth and have some heat, build some heat. Let me pick your part. Uh, let me pick your opponent for tonight, and you pick mine. Okay, and then that that's a fresh take on something they haven't done in a long time. Okay, if I'm Ambrose, I'm saying, okay, well, who do I want to face, Dolph Ziggler? I'm going to put him in a match with the Miz. And if you're Dolph Ziggler and I want to put Ambrose in a match with somebody, he's like, oh, Bray Wyatt, there you go. There's your match. And those are fresh matchups, and you don't have to have uh, – and I understand the mentality of why they put them on the same side because you want them to not face off because you want to have that fresh – face off at, at the pay-per-view or at the special show, whatever you want to call it. You want to be that their maiden voyage, if you will. You know, you don't want to have them brawling every week and then because you, you have to escalate, you know? I mean, at one True. point you, you have them have a singles match on, on, on free TV and you're like, well, why do I want to pay, pay to see this? Well, what am I going to see on the pay-per-view that I haven't seen already? This is a way that you do that. Put them in. Let me pick your opponent, or don't have just have them promo and then don't uh, don't include them, or put them in a six man and never have them in the ring at the same time. That would work too. Something I'd... different rather than can they coexist? Yeah, they can until they fight at the end of the fucking match, like they always do. I didn't take issue with uh, last week when Finn Balor had those sweet ass kicks on Seth Rollins. Oh no, yeah, that's I that, like I like when you have some physicality, a little bit, a little yeah. bit, but yeah, a little bit because I mean with Orton and and Lesnar you have some physicality, but you're not having them brawl all over the arena like Chris Benoit, Kevin Sullivan, circa 1996. You know, or brawling yeah. and like breaking tables like it's uh, ECW back in the 90s. Totally. Well, with the, with the example I brought up with having them on opposite tag teams, yeah, you would have to do what you said with the six man, have them just, just not. Just keep them away from each other. It's easier, in a, six, away from each it's other. easier yes. in a six man to keep them away from each other, I think. True. I mean, you don't have that much time to go. In a promo segment, just build some heat. That's one. You get away with one week right there. You've got, what, two, three weeks leading up to SummerSlam? Okay, this week I pick your opponent, you pick mine. Next week we have a contract signing, and then you're it's SummerSlam. There you go. Sounds pretty simple to book wrestling, doesn't Sign it? Sign me up. Doesn't it though? Doesn't it sound like? Yeah, but I mean, you've got Jesus. They, I think they overthink stuff so much. But um, so SmackDown recycled an angle here, essentially, with the tag teams, and just like they had all of the the women come out a couple weeks ago and show how all the women are. Gonna face people. You have Becky Lynch was out there, and then Carmella, and then um, you know, insert the rest of the women here. Same thing happened here with the American Alphas facing uh, Slap Dick One and Slap Dick Two, and then the Vaude Villains come out, the Ascension comes out, the Hype Bros come out. I 
I realized that SmackDown's tag team division was very, very lacking. But man, I didn't realize it was that bad. It was. They're gonna have to fix. They're gonna have to fix that. I mean, American Alpha basically just needs to win the belts and never lose them, because I mean they're not gonna lose to the Ascension. The Ascension's been booked like me and you drank twelve beers and went out there and wrestled. That's how they're (laughs) booked. And the Vaude Villains, the gimmick is shit. They need to get rid of that tag team or rebook them or something, Um, or repackage them rather. Yeah, I don't like it when you have a bunch of top heaviness on a card where it's so obvious who your champion just has to be, or in this case, your tag champions have to be, they need some competition equal to them they can feud with over the course of time. Oh, yeah. Multiple. You have to have multiple guys that are believable as your champions. And that's the problem with the brand extension is that you have very few choices in a lot of ways. You've got a ton of guys that could be intercontinental champion, but not that many guys that could be world champion, especially the way people have been booked. Yeah. Speaking of intercontinental champion, the Miz, they, they have a chance to solidify Apollo Crews as a, 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 the next big thing if they have him be like the ultimate warrior and just to the Miz's honky tonk man. If you remember SummerSlam 88, the Honky Tonk Man is supposed to face Brutus Beefcake, and Brutus Beefcake's face is all fucked up from an accident. And the Honky Tonk Man has been has held the Intercontinental Championship forever. One of the, he's the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time at this point, and he's in the ring SummerSlam 88, and he says, "Just send me somebody." And then you've got that great guitar riff. Ultimate Warrior comes running down the aisle and beats him in less than two minutes. That's what needs to happen with The Miz. The Miz has held the title for quite some time now, and he always seems to kind of escape. And he's got some heat on him, even more heat than – not as much heat as he did when he was main event in WrestleMania – but a little more heat as a mid card guy, you know. I like what they've done with the Miz with this. I think yeah. having having him be a long time champion, that is good booking around the Intercontinental Championship that I've so desperately for the longest time wanted to be what it used to be. And see, I don't think it kills him if he comes out and Apollo Cruz beats him and he well, no. pulls him to the stratosphere. No. And that, that and that's what you need. So WWE, uh, if you listen. Do it. Ultimate Warrior Apollo Crews. Versus the Miz's Honky Tonk Man. I don't have an issue with that at all. I think it'd be good. Uh, women's division. Just kind of kind of hit this real quick. Eva Marie. Oh, so fucking hot, man. She I, is finer than frogs. They are split four ways. I'm fine with her coming out and not wrestling. And, you know, this week she loses her top. And it has a wardrobe malfunction, if you will, and they send her to the back. Becky Lynch looked strong calling out somebody from the back, but did not look strong losing to Alexa Bliss, being distracted with Eva Marie's entire entrance. I've never understood, and I, under, I mean, I guess you know, you always get on to me for not suspending my disbelief enough. <laughs> But it just doesn't make any sense why if I know that you're not going to play your music and come sprinting out, that I can't just finish what I'm doing in the ring while your music is going to distract me. And that's what happened to Becky Lynch. But I've just never understood that, like where I'm talking or I'm wrestling, and when when your music plays, I have to freeze. <laughs> Ah. It's like, oh, I can't finish doing what I'm doing. The who? I mean, if you're gonna sprint, I know that I at least have seven or eight seconds before you get down to the ring. You know, I mean, think Mm -hmm. think about it logically. You're not, you're not damn Bo Jackson or like Deion Sanders running a four two forty 
coming down the aisle. So I've at least got seven or eight seconds from when your music hits to when you hit the ring, if you're even coming to the ring, so I could just finish what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just but wish for one second, like just <laughs> once that they would do it and say, okay, who gives a shit about your music? I'm going to still go. Or if you're in the middle of a promo and you interrupt me, if I'm still talking, like, oh, thanks for interrupting me, but I'm going to keep going. That'd be such a CM Punk type move. Like I could easily picture CM Punk having somebody up on his shoulders, getting ready to put him to sleep. The music hits, and he's just like, "Okay, yeah, I'm I'm gonna watch you here. I still have my guy." Yeah, I'm gonna. Stop. In the words of you. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my go, <laughs> to, go sleep to sleep and pin him, and then I'm gonna get up and boom. I'm gonna pin him, and I'm gonna look at you and wave while I pin him for the three. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, what's wrong? That'd with be that? funny. Oh, yeah. I could easily see Punk doing something like that. I miss or Kevin Punk. Owens. Sure. Oh, dude, I miss seeing Punk so much. That is that is your if if for the longest time. For those of you who don't know, Charles has referred to the Undertaker as my boyfriend. Because I mean, yeah, he is my favorite, but I'm a, I am also a, a total mark for him. Taker mark, if you will. Your ass. If the Undertaker to me, that CM Punk is to you what what Taker is to I me. I wouldn't go that, that far. Is, or, that is boyfriend city to you. I wouldn't go that far. I I do. I I really enjoy CM Punk. Um, I I wish he would come back. The the company needs another guy like him, and they could. They don't even really need Punk. They have a fat Punk in uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is everything that CM Punk was or could without, be. without the martial arts background. Yeah, without the – except he is fat, and Vince probably doesn't like the fact that he's fat. He can talk just as well as Punk. He can wrestle just as well as Punk. He hasn't been booked as well, but I, I early on in his career, I think he's maybe been booked better than Punk, but – I mean, Kevin Owens could be – Kevin Owens would do that. He would finish the match or talk while you're coming out to him. I mean, <clears throat> on Raw, he is – when they're when he and Jericho are walking away from the ring, he kept saying, how are you? Like making fun of the fact that Enzo <laughs> and Cass were saying, how you doing? He was like, That's how are stuff. you? How are you? <laughs> That's good stuff. It's just little, little stuff like that 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 is it gets over huge. And Punk was great at that. Very good instincts like that of CM Punk to like know that if I say how are you repeatedly is going to be this tongue in cheek way to little smart ass way to make fun of Enzo and Cass. Exactly. CM, CM Punk had that kind of had that gut instinct that Kevin Owens has. He thinks I would like to speak quickly. Yes, absolutely. I, I would love to see them book Kevin Owens the way they were booking CM Punk while he was hot or to book Kevin Owens the way he was booked in ROH when he was viewed as this like this crazy ass problem child who we must ban his uh pile driver because it could kill the whole roster when he's I'd feuding love- with Jim Cornette and all that shit yeah it was good stuff I love that uh, of course we've talked on the show before about how I'd love to see WWE hire Truth Martini Oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> really would be. With uh, and I feel sorry for Carmella because she's smoking hot, and I think she's gotten better in the ring. But she, when she comes out and starts doing her shtick to the ring, you could hear a pin drop. She's so hot, but she's not over at all. In a case like this, do you send her back to NXT? I don't think so because she's I mean, not gonna, that, how often is that actually is that even done that much? Do you well, think well with the with WWE the women's of that? with the women's stuff? I think you yeah I think it is done. the The women it's done a little bit more than you would think. They they kind of float back and forth, but I think it would be seen as a demotion. But if they book her well, she might start to get a reaction. I don't think she needs to cut a promo necessarily. When she comes out, I think she just needs to say her gimmick and say, you know, bada bing, realest chick in the ring, and then go into the ring. And she's from Princess of Staten Island, 
and do the same thing, and then she'll get some people kind of behind her a little bit. But, I mean, she got some – when she was in NXT, she was way more over because of that residual heat from Enzo and Cass. She hasn't gotten that rub from them on the main roster because she hasn't been with them. Now, everybody on, that watches NXT knows that she was with Enzo and Cass. But not everybody at a WWE event knows who she is from NXT. You know, she's not Bailey. You know, she's Carmella. But I think they could do a better job of booking her, but you could hear it and pin drop. I thought it was good that she beat Natalia, so maybe they're going to push her a little bit. But um, SmackDown was okay. We saw Randy Orton and Alberto Del Rio for the 790th time. They're pushing the whole RKO out of nowhere, hoping that – I hope that Randy Orton doesn't beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. I hope not, too. Maybe, I don't think it will be very good, booking-wise. Brock needs to lose to younger guys. He needs to lose to, like, Ambrose or Rollins or – Kevin think, Owens. Kevin Owens would be perfect. I, I mean, Those just, two in a we're match. Just, we're just, oh, my God. We're just gushing about Kevin Owens, but could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine the build to Kevin Owens, Brock Lesnar, with oh. Owens promoing against Paul Heyman? And if it, Kevin Owens beats him as a heel or a face or whatever you want to call Owens going forward, I mean, he's a heel right now. But if he beats Brock Lesnar, he'll never shut up. I mean, he's been in the company over a year now, and he still talks about how he beat John Cena in the first night in the company. Imagine if he beat Brock Lesnar, you know, for like a title or something. That'd be huge. Nobody could do it better than him. And the match would just be, oh, my God, it would be such chicanery, as you call it. It would be so good. It would ju- it would be carnage, and I, I would love to see on a number of levels. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Uh, SmackDown this week too didn't have AJ Styles and Cena. Just had a promo package. I know a lot of guys were going overseas for the New Zealand tour, but and I, I'm fine with AJ Cena just having a promo package. But just kind of lets you know that. Not everybody's on TV every week, but something – the promo package was okay. But are you excited about SummerSlam? I am. It's too bad I'm going to be out of town when it's happening, and I can't just see it offhand. Just as – well, see it, you know, right away. I'm going to have to see it as soon as I get back. But Time no, I, I am – yeah, I, I am looking forward to it, though. Yeah, Absolutely. I am too. I mean, look at it on paper – You've got Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton as the inner promotional feud. It's a main level. That's a main event level match. Seth Rollins, Finn Balor for the Universal Title, which we haven't seen yet. Another main main event level match. Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler for the WWE Championship. Another main event level match. AJ Cena, another main event level match. And you could almost arguably say that Charlotte and Sasha is a main event level match. I mean, it's obviously not like a main event caliber yet, but it's still, I think, up there. It's a pretty good match. And then you've got Miz, Apollo Crews, where I hope Apollo Crews becomes the ultimate warrior. Roman Roman Reigns and Rusev for the U.S. title. New Day in the club for the tag titles, Enzo and Kaz versus Jericho and Owens, and then probably Sheamus versus Cesaro. You keep talking about Apollo Crews like you want him to come out there with Warriors paint and the oh, streamers and, and shaking the ropes, and, and as Ric Flair called it, running the ropes. <laughs> I, it'd be better than anything he's done so far in the on the main roster. I'm not saying he needs to come out and be the Ultimate Warrior, but come out and beat the Miz quickly like the Ultimate Warrior did is like that shot in the ass to kind of – it not only legitimizes Apollo Crews, it also gives a boost to the Intercontinental title. 
I mean, think about the Intercontinental title. It's never been hotter than it was when the Warrior had it. He beat Hulk Hogan while he still had the damn belt at WrestleMania 6. Swing it around his dead head. Yeah. I mean, there you go. So, I mean, that's going to, that would legitimize the Intercontinental title. And that's what we need. We need these secondary titles to mean something. The titles should mean something. The separation and differing of brands should help that. Is what I'd like to, but the booking that's what I'd has like to, to think. improve. Oh, yeah. The booking has to improve. Um, uh, finally, the last bit, bit of news I wanted to kind of get your opinion on it. I thought it, WWE came out today that Stephanie McMahon tells the NBC News that the company will incorporate LGBT characters into their storylines. Now, I've been a wrestling fan all my life. Okay, there's been countless effeminate kind of gay overtone type characters before. There have been bisexual characters done in wrestling. There's been transsexual type characters done in wrestling. Why come out and say that they're going to be incorporated into the storylines? How is that any different than where we've been before? It seems much ado about nothing. If it's not broke, don't fix it is always what I say. And I guess my issue is this. If you have a character who maybe comes out of the closet on Raw, for example, just throwing that out there, and they are now a part of their gimmick is that they are a gay individual. Well, are you going to now have a anti-gay heel? Yeah, that's what is I was, it that that's, that's not you point. don't need that. That was if my you're, point. If you're today. trying to help the LGBT community, then you can't have anti-gay characters because if you're going to have pro-gay characters. Then is it the counterpoint to that going to be anti-gay? Yes. yes. Simply enough. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and you could look no further than the WWF's history. Okay, Gold Dust. Why did he have so much heat in the nineties? He was hitting on dudes. He was hitting on dudes. Homophobia was the reason he had so much heat. Okay, because he was trying to kiss people and he was stalking Razor Ramon. He had tremendous heat. It was awesome. It was great stuff, actually. Well, and honestly, the way that the world is today, I think, like you said, if they have a character that's that speaks to the LGBT community and that's a predominant part of their character, they're opening themselves up to a shitstorm. Oh, yeah. Because what are they going to do when, let's say, you know, Darren Young is actually gay in real life, okay? He came out not too long ago. If they start doing a homosexual gimmick with him and the person he's feuding against has all these anti-gay remarks and uh, makes fun of him for being homosexual, and then WWE gets busted down for – having anti-gay slurs on their TV. It's like, well, we tried to be nice and have, you know, have the LGBT community stand up and all this shit, but it's, I don't see a way that they can do it based on their track record and not just fuck it up six ways to Sunday. They will fuck it up and they'll, their stock price will dip and they'll have, uh, like the gay and lesbians, like picketing WWE and all this shit. And I just don't, it's not going to end well. You and I both know, and it's changed some recently since ESPN and and talk radio kind of give wrestling a little more love these days, especially around WrestleMania time. Other than that, though, the only time wrestling seems to get into the mainstream news is when it's bad news. Yeah, when they fuck stuff. And this Dude, this would be enough. They'll, it's they'll not going to end well. It's not. No, it, it won't. It, and essentially what his – you know it was a public relations move on the part of Stephanie McMahon, an unnecessary one at that, and it's just going to actually 
be the opposite. It's going a public relations move is obviously to to help your company. This could end up backfiring in a bad way. I mean, push the fact that you have a gay superstar that it doesn't really matter that he's gay, that he's still successful, and you put him in a prominent position. They did that. Sure. You know, Darren Young came out as gay. He hasn't been pushed down the card. He's gotten a push. They put him with Bob Backlund. He got a title shot against the Miz. And on the other hand, do you have a guy that's, that they push as gay and he's, like, unbeatable? Like, do you have, like, the gay John Cena to where it's, like, shoved down your throat? I mean, it's well, not like – this is not like the, the Attitude Era where sex is such a big part of it. It's not like – all these guys are coming out and talking about, well, I was fucking my girlfriend the other day or my wife this or my wife that or I want to make sex with this uh, total diva person or whatever. <laughs> you don't really have that. It, no. In the PG era, it's not a a superstar's um, sexual orientation is unimportant to their character. You know, they're a good guy, they're a bad guy. It doesn't matter if they go home with dudes or if they go home with women or if they are they dress like a woman and they have a penis or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's unimportant no. to their character. I, I, I think, like you said, it's much ado about nothing. But to come out and say that, you're drawing attention to your product and you're kind of forcing your hand that you're going to have to do something. And traditionally it hasn't ended well for, for, I mean, we talked about WCW with uh, Sting kind of making fun of William Regal as Lord Stephen Regal saying he was sassy and effeminate and kind of intimating he was a sissy because he was foreign. I mean, that's xenophobic and homophobic. They do that. And they made a gay comment with Cass on Monday where Cass intimated that, Jericho and Owens had each other's back, and they were rubbing each other's back like Bert and Ernie. That's intimating that they were homosexuals. It sure was. And so we're going to come out and say that we ha we're going to have LGBT characters, and it's going to end really well for a company that makes characters fuck dead people, uh, deals like improperly with rape. And race and racial stereotypes abound. I I just don't think it's an end well. I think you don't you stay away from that shit if you're WWE. And as poorly as they book anyway, why am I to expect them to do something good with this? Yeah, if you I know, was, I would. Yeah, it's so. Uh, it's just they're kicking over an ant bed that was like they drove across town to find that ant bed to kick it over. <laughs> You know, it wasn't like they it's were true. walking through their backyard and like, oh, shit, here's an ant bed, and they kicked it over. They are like, well, let's drive 30 minutes and find the ant bed to kick over. You know, I thought, now this was on the network, but Legends House ends with Pat Patterson coming out of the closet on a WWE platform. I mean, everyone knew that Pat Patterson yeah. was gay, and uh, I'll quote what Roddy Piper said. He's he's a respected senior in their business and that was that was very well done though he was very well supported pat patterson was by the rest of the legends house crew that was solid that was well done but that was also reality tv and pat patterson is very much so a respected senior in their business um maybe you if, if you really want to help the Gay community, maybe you put together – see, I don't even think you do that. You don't get out in front of this. Like you said, you don't drive out across town to find the ant bed. No, you just leave it the fuck alone. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Darren Young thing, that went over just fine. There was not – there were not gay people lashing out against WWE or, or anything like that because he came out of the closet, and that was that. Yeah, that was it. that's it. That's it. That was all. Pat Patterson came out of the closet. That was that. It shouldn't be a big deal. It should just no. be because they're going to fuck it up. They fuck up everything like that. Right. 
I mean, this is a company that had Roddy Piper paint himself half white and half black when he was facing Bad News Brown. This is a company that made a, a Samoan be Japanese. You know? Uh, this is a company that had stereotypical characters well into the into the 2000s. I mean, and with WCW, you had Larry Zabisco making... Uh, well, the, see, that was in the 90s, though, but you had freaking Umaga. Was... You had Umaga, who, who was a Samoan <laughs> savage in, like, 2009. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. a stereotype city, man. Yeah. And now we're going to try to say that we're going to be proactive and we're going to have a gay character, a bi character, a trans character? Holy shit. I just hold my breath for him, man. <laughs> we'll we'll see we'll see how it develops. Shit, it'll be a shit storm of negative media. Oh, it's just yeah. like you don't need that. Why go looking for that shit? I know well, that main, mainstream media doesn't give a shit about wrestling. They love to bury wrestling, and so this would give them such an open well, way to yeah. do that. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. So. They're always looking for a reason to do it. And ESPN, you know, they, they came out today that they're going to start covering wrestling on their website. And so this is going to be kayfabe city uh, for, through, for ESPN and just kind of sunshine pump and whatever. ESPN is never going to be able to keep up with like a, a website like PW Insider or Dave Meltzer or any of these other quote unquote dirt sheets that actually have like contacts in the business that give the wrestling fans the type of information that they need. They just take what WWE gives them. And it was that say about ESPN that their ratings are bad enough to where they have to cover wrestling now. Well, I've been, uh, I've been pretty low on ESPN for some time now. I think they're kind of an arrogant company. I think too often they like to go the political route and oh, shove they're their. Oh, PC, man. For me. Oh my God. They, they shove their liberal agendas down your throat. Like you said, very PC. It's super Hell with PC. ESPN. It's I mean, super, super PC. And it's not that, I mean, liberal or conservative or not. I mean, PC is PC. And for them, I mean, the shit that they get upset about and, you know, they, they, they don't, I don't think they properly report a lot of things either, but that's another, another topic for another day, for another website. Uh, you got anything else on Raw, SmackDown, SummerSlam, anything leading into this next nah, week? No, nothing from me. Nothing cool. from me, my man. That's going to do it for us today. You've been listening to Out of Combined Weight presents Hot Tags. We'll see you next time.